In this video, I'll be showing you how you can create scenes that have multiple inputs, just like this, this, and this. G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here, and in this video today, we're going to go over how you can create scenes in vMix, or you might know these as mix effects. It just depends on what sort of software or hardware you've used. Now, I'll show you how you can combine elements like titles, logos, and cameras all together to create a shot like I had in my intro. You can do this in vMix by adding your inputs together using layers. Layers in vMix allow you to create a scene out of any of your inputs. You just need to layer them on top of each other. You don't have to build just one or two scenes. You can create as many as you like using all of your inputs. You can use your inputs independently, but also create multi-layered scenes out of them. Now I'm using vMix 24 today. If you have an older version of vMix, it may say multi-view instead of layers in certain sections, but I'll point that out when we come across it. When you add an input into vMix, you'll see a visual representation of it in the interface. Inputs are the building blocks of your production, and then you can add these together to create scenes in vMix with multiple inputs. You can start with a blank input and add layers, or you can add layers to an existing input. The beauty of vMix is that you can combine any of your inputs together. For example, if I wanted to add a permanent logo to my camera right here, then I can just add a layer to it. So firstly, you will actually need inputs in your production before you can start layering them. So as you can see here, I've got some cameras, I've got video files, I've got my title and that sort of thing in my production ready to go. Now we have plenty of videos on how to add inputs into vMix, um, but I'll quickly add a new input. So I'm gonna to go to add input in the bottom left-hand corner down here, and then I can select what sort of input I want to add. So I'm gonna add an image, Basically, you just browse to it, and I'm going to select this logo right here. Click open, and then click OK. And as you can see now, I have a visual representation of it in my production ready to be used, which is really handy because it gives me the ability to see everything in my production. So in order to start creating layers in your production, what you need to do is go to the input settings of the input you want to add the layer to. So each of your inputs down here have a little gear icon in the bottom right-hand corner. And that's how you can access the input settings for that input. So this is the camera here, and we wanna add the logo to it. So what I'm gonna do is click this little gear icon down here, and these are your input settings. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see a section called layers slash multi-view. Now in older versions of vMix, this just said multi-view, but layers makes way more sense. So that's why we've changed it, and that may not even have multi-view in the future, who knows. So we need to click the layers section here, layers tab here, and this opens up the layers screen. As you can see on the left-hand side here, we have one through 10. So you can add 10 layers on top of this input. Next to that, you'll see some tick boxes, and the tick boxes mean that you can turn on and off that layer. Now there's also shortcuts for that as well. So if you wanted to set up a shortcut to turn off a layer, you can set that up. Next to that, you'll see the drop-down menu. Now that allows you to select an input to be on that particular layer. So first of all, what we wanna do is add a logo up here. So that's what we're going to do, first of all. So on layer one, what I'm gonna do is select the logo that I just added, so logo.png. All right, so now I have a giant banana covering my face, which isn't really the best look. Um, I, actually, it's probably not, probably not too bad. It does cover my face. All right, so in order to move that into the, the correct location, I can actually use this screen down here to make some basic adjustments. So I can use my left click on my mouse and then drag it around like so. And in order to zoom, I can hold down the shift key and then drag the mouse in and out using the left click to zoom it. So these are just some basic adjustments and then I can click it again to move it in the top corner. Now to refine these adjustments, all you need to do is click edit next to that layer. So if I click edit here, it will open up the position tab and it will have the layer number one selected up the top here from the drop down. So now I can continue to make edits to it, change the zoom, uh, I can pan it, I can rotate it on different axes like so. I click this to change the axis like that. And let me just reset these. And you can also do things like crop it. So from the top corner here, I can click cropping. Uh, and underneath that, you can also create a border if you're using a square or a rectangular um, input. So for things like a camera or a call or a, an image that's square or a rectangle, you can set a border here. However, this PNG today is not one of those, so I can't set a border for it. All right, so in order to uh, save those changes, you can just click X up the top here. But now I'm gonna add another layer to this particular input. So I'm gonna go to layers again, then I'm gonna go to number two, and then I'm going to select my title. 
Now you notice with the title, it's actually going to appear full screen. So this is a 1920 by 1080 title that I've created in the GT title designer. So I don't need to make any changes to it because it's exactly where I need it to be. Okay, so you will notice that in my preview window up here and down here in the layers window that I have my safe areas turned on. So they can be switched on from here or from the preview window up here. And it just gives me an idea of the best place to position my content when I add my layers and that sort of thing. All right, so let's go back to the layers section over here quickly. Now you'll see the numbers one to 10 and those are the uh, layering locations. So one is at the very back and 10 is at the top. So if you had layers that kind of overlapped and you wanted to shift the position, you can just drag the numbers. So I can move this down two to one. So that will switch them around if you wanted to do that. Again, as I said before, if you wanted to turn off a title, you can use the tick box uh, to turn it off. Now on the right hand side here, we have some basic templates. So if I click on a template here, what it will do is we'll move layer one and layer two next to each other like so. There's a bunch of different options here that you can select. Now, if you liked a particular way that you'd created these layers, you can click add here and it will add this as a template. And then you can apply it to other inputs that you have in vMix. Say you wanted a logo up here and a title down here. Um, you could create a template that allows you to just apply that across multiple different inputs. All right, so now that we've done that, what I'm gonna do is click the X and that is just going to save that out. And as you can see now, I have a shot here that has my logo and it has my title already ready to go. So in order to complete that opening shot, I just need to add a camera here. So I'll show you how to do that. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the third layer and I'm going to select my overhead camera. As you can see, that's gone full screen. So I need to adjust the zoom on that. So I'm gonna zoom this down and then I'm just gonna drag this across into the top corner like so. And I wanna actually add a border to it. So I'm gonna click border and then let's just go 50 here. So now I have a uh, camera here ready to go in the corner. Now I can just X this to close it out. And as you can see, now I have my shot, except the quaco is different to the banana, as the intro. So I've got my uh, fully layered shot here ready to use in my production. So you might be thinking or just about ready to comment on YouTube and say, wow, this is a great shot, Tim, but don't really want a banana here all the time. How do I use my camera as a layered input like this one here, but also just by itself? How do I use my camera independently? Well, you can do that by adding a blank input in vMix and then layering it with whatever inputs you like. So first of all, I need to get rid of these layers. Nope. Wow, that was amazing. So firstly, we'll need to add a blank input. Now you can do that by going down to the bottom left-hand corner here next to add input. There's a little quick menu that you can use with a little arrow. So if we click on this, it will open up the quick menu and allow us to select blank. Now you can also go to add input, then color and then transparent if you wanted to, but clicking the little quick menu and going to blank is the easiest way to go. Now that we have a blank input, we can now layer it with any other inputs from our production. So we need to go back into the input settings of this new input. So in the bottom right hand corner, we just need to click this here. And then what we need to do is then go to the layers tab like we did before. Now I can add things like my camera, for example. So now I have my camera available on layer one. Then I can go ahead and add my title like this one here. And what I can do next is add my logo. Now, as I showed you before, I actually just uploaded a PNG file and then resized it. Now, what I prefer to do is create my images as a full framed image. So I create an image in Photoshop that's 1920 by 1080 and then I place my logo in the corner where I want it to be so I don't have to resize it in vMix. So what I've done here is I've added a logo called 1080. Now, as you can see, it's automatically gone in the top corner because I've exported that image as a PNG as 1920 by 1080, which makes the positioning a lot easier. And finally, I'm just gonna put a video up here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just select this winter video and then I'm hold down shift, click this to drag it in, to zoom it like so. And I'm just gonna put this in the top corner like so. All right, so I'm just gonna X out of this now. And now as you can see, I have a fully formed shot like this. I have a logo, video file, picture in picture. I have a title down here, 
But as you can see in the preview, my camera is still completely independent. So I can still use my camera without anything on top of it and I can then have a multi-layered input as well. So it's all independent. Now you can also see that I can use my winter video as well. I can merge that out like so. So that's completely independent as well. And so yeah, that's now a multi-layered input using other inputs. So one thing that you wanna consider is renaming that new input that you've created. So as you can see down here, it's just called color. So what I'm gonna do is go down to the input settings like this, go to general, and then just rename it to something like awesome shot. So that way you've now got an input with a cool name that you'll remember when you wanna to switch to it. Now, if you want to make things even easier, what you can do is you can minimize all of the different inputs that you're not necessarily using and then you can just keep open, say your multi-layered shot and your camera, the ones that you're mainly using in your production. Now you can also create a category here. So you could put all of your scenes into this category here, like so, just drag and drop that in there. Or you can change it from here by clicking on the input settings and selecting the categories here. So now when I go into this scene here, I've just got this scene. So I could use this to switch between all my scenes uh, if I wanted to do that. So you might be wondering, well, what about green screen content? Well, it's the exact same process that I showed you just then. So you would create a blank input, and then for the first layer, you would put in your background, and then on top of that, you would put your chroma keyed video. So we have a video about chroma keying and green screening in the description if you wanna check that out. But for a really quick example, I'll go into the input settings, I'll go to the layers, and then I'll add a chroma keyed video in here, which is my confetti. And then so what will happen is you'll now see the confetti video come over the top on that top layer when I transition this over. So as you can see, the confetti is now falling uh, on the top layer of that input. One of the cool things about vMix is that the layers are independent from the overlay channel system in vMix. So you can set up an input with 10 permanent layers, but also use the four overlay channels whenever you'd like to add even more content to your production. So let's just switch over to awesome shot here. So as you can see, I've got all of the things happening over the confetti and everything. But now I also wanna add my camera temporarily to my overlay channel four, which should be around about here somewhere. So I'm gonna to go to the overhead cam and then I'm gonna put it into channel four. As you can see now, I have this that I can easily turn on and off. So I have all of these layers and overlays that I can use independently of each other. So as these layered inputs that we've created today become actual inputs in vMix, then you can use that layered input on a layer of another input. So you could have a 10 layered input on a 10 layered input to create layers for days. Now, obviously you can also use a layered input as a part of an overlay as well. So I can click this and the layered input will be in overlay channel four like so. There are a number of vMix shortcuts that can be used with layers. So for example, I showed you before with the tick box where you can turn a layer on and off, there's a shortcut for that. And if I wanted to say change this video in this location, there's also a shortcut for that. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So in the top right hand corner, you'll just need to go to settings and then you'll need to go to shortcuts down here. And then we're gonna add a shortcut. Then I'm gonna click find and just press down the space bar just for an example. All right, so function here, what I'm gonna do is just search for layer. So in BMX24, you can search. In older versions, this will be multi-view, um, but this version will be layer from now on. And so you have things like layer on, layer off. You can toggle uh, layer on off. Uh, down the bottom, we're gonna choose this set layer option. So I'm gonna click this here. So what this will do, it'll allow you to change the uh, input and the layer depending on what you've selected. So what you'll need to do is select your multi-layered shot so awesome shot is what we called it. So before you set up your shortcut, it's a really good idea to make a note of what's on each layer and what you're going to replace. So it'll make this value section a lot easier. So in value, you'll need to set the index and the input. Now the index refers to the layer number, so one to 10, and then input refers to the input number in vMix that you want to now be on that layer. So for example, I've got a winter video up here that I wanna replace. That's on layer four and then I put a comma, and then I wanna choose which input number I've got down here that I wanna replace it with. So I wanna replace it with the B's video, which is input number four in vMix. So on layer four, I now want the B's video to appear. And I'm gonna click okay down the bottom and then okay here. And now what I'm gonna do is press the space bar and it should now replace it with the B's video. So there you go. All right, so that's a shortcut on how you can set the layer to do what you want. 
So that's how you can create multi-layered inputs in vMix to create scenes and mix effects. If you do have any questions about layers, drop us an email via the contact page at vmix.com. It's too hard to answer technical questions on YouTube, so it's really important just to drop us an email so we can help you out. So thanks for watching and we'll stream your layer. Congratulations on finishing a vMix YouTube video. Although it's just a few short minutes, the time we've spent together means a lot to us. If you'd like to spend some more quality time with us, feel free to subscribe to our channel. If you're into social media, look for vMix HD across all your favorite platforms.